Good day, everyone. So we will start our discussion. Actually, our we will be continuing our discussion about anemia. So last time we did talk about the an introduction about anemia. What are the usual diagnostic tests that needs to be done for anemia? And then eventually we proceeded with your um, iron deficiency anemia. We did discuss anemia due to chronic disease, and at the same time we also had a brief discussion about your hereditary hemochromatosis and hemosiderosis. And um, for the last part, last time we did discuss about megaloblastic anemia. So before I start um, this topic, I hope that you are already finished with your um, video discussions with regards to those topics so that we can jump start immediately to our topic today, which is all about bone marrow failure. So bone marrow failure is one important thing that we need to, to discuss today, first and foremost, because bone marrow failure could also be attributed to anemia, okay? It could also be attributed to anemia. So as we go along in a short while, we will be discussing different um, forms of bone marrow failure in which there will be um, there will be diseases, okay? There will be diseases that will be discussed with regards um, to bone marrow failure. So let's start with um, the pathophysiology of bone marrow failure first. So failure of your bone marrow can actually be, um, can actually arrive in different form. It can actually present itself as the same thing as high, um, bone marrow hypoplasia, but in reality, there are actually different um, different reasons or different pathophysiology and pathophysiological changes in our bone marrow that leads now to its failure. So the first one is the destruction of hematopoietic stem cell as a result of injury by either drugs, chemicals, radiation, viruses, and autoimmune mechanism. So we all know that your hematopoietic stem cell are the progenitor cells of your blood cells, such as your red blood cells, your white blood cells, and your platelets. So in cases of bone marrow failure, bone marrow failure is not always hereditary. Some of these are actually acquired due to exposure to a particular cellular injury brought about by drugs, chemicals, radiation, viruses, and in some cases, autoimmune mechanisms, okay? So this time, there are antibodies, direct autoantibodies associated with their destruction. In addition to that, there is there could also be a premature senescence and apoptosis of your hematopoietic stem cell as a result of genetic mutation. So you know, okay, we all know that your progenitor cells, okay, your, your progenitor cells um, should actually be, um, should actually perform its function of producing the blood cells that's needed by the body. But in cases of genetic mutation, there can actually be a premature um, apoptosis or destruction of our hematopoietic stem cell. So dito guys, makikita ninyo na hindi pa sila nagiging mature cells. They, are already, they already underwent apoptosis. Hence, um, there are no mature cells that are produced. Okay. Um, thirdly, okay. Thirdly, we also have ineffective hematopoiesis caused by stem cell mutations. Okay. So we did talk about that when with regards to anemia, it can either be insufficient erythropoiesis or ineffective hematopoiesis. Okay. So in ineffective hematopoiesis or erythropoiesis, there is a problem now with your with your progenitor cell okay intrinsic problems with regards to your with regards to your cell okay and it can also be due to deficiency in vitamin b12 or in your folate that are very much needed in dna synthesis and then now i will reference you back to our discussion with megaloblastic anemia you all know that megaloblastic anemia can be because of vitamin B12 deficiency or folic acid deficiency, both of which are very important components in DNA replication. Hence, if there are deficiency in such vitamins in um, like your folic, your folic acid, um, there will be an um, ineffective hematopoiesis 
that will now lead to bone marrow failure. In addition to that, disruption of bone marrow microenvironment could also be um, a cause of your bone marrow failure. So remember that when we discuss your hematopoiet hematopoiesis, we did talk about the micro the bone marrow microenvironment, such as your um, your stromal cells, your endo endoreticul reticuloendothelial cells in the bone marrow. So if those uh, mechanisms are disrupted, if the mechanisms are disrupted there, it can also lead to bone marrow failure. Next. Decreased production of hematopoietic growth factors or related hormones. So you all know that um, for a specific for a specific type of cell to be produced, um, there are different um, stimulating factors, growth factors, cytokines, and most especially there are a lot of growth factors that are currently um, that are currently being um, currently being produced in your in your bone marrow to stimulate the production of your blood cells. So in the case that there is a decreased production of those hematopoietic growth factors, there, there will also be a bone marrow failure in that case. Okay. And last but definitely not the least is the loss of normal hematopoietic tissue. So you all know that the active, um, the active bone marrow that is capable of hematopoiesis is your red bone marrow. So in cases where we lost those hematopoietic tissue as a result of infiltration in the bone marrow with abnormal cells, that can also be cause of, that can also um, be a, um, that can also be a reason, okay? That can also be a reason for bone marrow failure okay for bone marrow failure with all the things that i have said here today we will actually be discussing them in accordance now to other diseases so there are specific diseases whereby you will be seeing all of this so ganito guys um, i will be mentioning the diseases and then the characteristic of a particular disease and then eventually lahat ng nandito right now on your on your on your screen these pathophysiological changes in your bone marrow all con um, can contribute to those diseases. Not necessarily all of them, but one or um, one of these is actually the reason unto why we have bone marrow failure in such diseases. So we will be starting with the first one, okay? We will be starting with the first one, and that is your aplastic anemia. So... Aplastic anemia uh, is being characterized by your peripheral blood's pancytopenia. So again, when I say pancytopenia, this is the overall decrease of all types of blood cells. Be it RBC, platelets, WBC, all of them are decreased in your peripheral blood smear, okay? In your peripheral blood, rather. So we also have reticulocytopenia. So reticulocytopenia is also observed in aplastic anemia. At the same time, bone marrow hypocellularity is also observed. So later on, I'll be showing you a picture of a normal, uh, normocellular bone marrow and a hypocellular bone marrow. In addition to that, there's also a depletion in your hematopoietic stem cells. So obviously, since your bone marrow is already in hypocellular state, there will also be a decrease in your hematopoietic stem cell. So again, pancytopenia in the presence of hypocellular or aplastic bone marrow is always um, expected, okay? It's always expected. Although this name might be misleading sometimes because it implies that anemia is the, on the only problem since we're calling aplastic anemia as it is, diba? As aplastic anemia, but in reality, all other um, blood cells like your WBC, specifically your neutrophils, and also your thrombocytes are decreased in number. So aplastic anemia man, yung tawag natin dito, it's not just the red blood cells that is decreased, but also other blood cells such as your WBC and your thrombocytes. So your aplastic anemia can actually be acquired or inherited, okay? It can actually be acquired or inherited. So 80 to 85% of the cases are actually acquired, okay? So pag sinabi nating acquired, you actually are exposed to a particular um, compound or simply it's just idiopathic, 
Okay? So with regards to acquired, 70% of the cases of your acquired um acquired um 70% of all the cases of aplastic anemia are actually idiopathic. So there are no known cause in, unto this. So, di ba, parang yung pag-iwan sa'yo ng ex mo, sinabi ko na sa inyo yan, para mo, kahit iniwan ka ng ex mo, mukha ka pa rin matalino. Pag tinanong ng friends mo, bakit kayo nag-break? It's idiopathic. Okay? It's an idiopathic effect. So, moving forward, let's go to the second one. It can also be secondary. Okay? So, when I say secondary, you are exposed to a particular drug, chemical, radiation, virus that might cause um, a plastic anemia. So we have here um, chemicals such as your cytotoxic drugs, your benzene, your radiation, your idiosyncratic. Later on, I'll be explaining what idiosyncratic secondary aplastic anemia is all about. It can also be your viruses, okay? So your viruses like your Epstein-Barr virus or your EBV. Your hepatitis virus um, could also cause it. And your human immunodeficiency virus could also cause aplastic anemia. Miscellaneous conditions such as your paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria or your PNH is also associated um, with aplastic anemia, autoimmune disease, and pregnancy. Okay? And pregnancy. So inherited cases, on the other hand, can also account to around 15 to 20%. Okay? 15 to 20% of the total, um, total, uh, what do you call this? Total cases of aplastic anemia could also be inherited. So it can be in the form of your Fanconi anemia, your dyskeratosis congenita, and your Swatchman Diamond syndrome, which will all be discussed briefly later on. So, the laboratory findings with your aplastic anemia, sabi nga natin kanina, we have pancytopenia. So, meaning to say low RBC, you also um, you also have leukopenia. So, selective fall specifically in your granulocytes. Okay? In your granulocytes, in your thrombocytopenia as well. And um, unlike other um, unlike other bone marrow related diseases, when it comes to aplastic anemia, there are no abnormal cells in the peripheral blood smear. So ibig sabihin, hindi ko hindi ito katulad ni leukemia na nagkakaroon na tayo ng immature cells, okay? Ng immature cells or abnormal cells in the peripheral blood smear. Here, what actually happens during aplastic anemia is that wala ka na uubos or walang enough cells in your body. Okay? Walang, walang enough cells in your body. And as you can see, bone marrow shows hypoplasia. Okay? Hypoplasia. So meaning to say, even the per, the hematopoietic stem cell are low in number inside your bone marrow. What I also want to highlight that with regards to aplastic anemia, this type of anemia is appearing to be a normocytic, normochromic red cells. Your, your red cells are normochromic and normocytic although decrease in number. So dito na natin ngayon masasabi na, di ba sabi ko last time, your anemia can actually be a cause of either low RBC count or a defect in the RBC in, in it itself. Okay? Aside from that, okay, so kung makikita rin ninyo, with regards to ano, with regards to um, a plastic anemia, your neutrophils also appear normal. Okay? Your neutrophils also appear normal normal okay your neutrophils appear normal so in addition to that okay in addition to that let's go now to the um acquired um a plastic anemia first so we all know that idiopathic is the first reason okay majority of it are actually idiopathic secondly is because of secondary we call it secondary aplastic anemia so this is now due to the exposure to drugs chemical radiation or infection um, of viruses such as your Epstein-Barr, your HIV, and your hepatitis viruses, okay? Your hepatitis virus. So here, okay, in the secondary aplastic anemia, you can see on box 19.3, the selected drugs reported that have a rare association with idiosyncratic secondary aplastic anemia. 
Wow, nakakatalino naman basahin. Idiosyncratic secondary aplastic anemia. So what is idiosyncratic secondary aplastic anemia? So it is a condition, it is a rare condition on in which um <coughs> in which there is a combination of both genetic and environmental factors in susceptible individuals. So it is both, it's like a merge, it's like a merging of idios, idiopathic and secondary causes. So merong internal, internal factor within your body that is not known, but at the same time, you're also exposed to such secondary um, to such compounds like your drugs, chemicals, and radiation that actually amplify your chances of having aplastic anemia. So parang sabihin na natin na um, marupok ka na to start with, okay? Marupok ka na to start with, and then sakto pa na yung crush mo yung nanligaw sa'yo. So it's a double whammy, di ba? So marupok ka na nga, tapos crush na crush mo pa yung yung nanligaw sa'yo, wala nang ligaw-ligaw, di ba? Sagot agad. So, parang ganun yung, mangyayari, ganun yung nangyari sa aplastic anemia. Nagkataon na both the genetic and the environmental factors um, are in there. That's why it now progresses to become now your idiosyncratic secondary aplastic anemia. So, again, it's a combination of both genetic and your environmental factor. Okay? Your environmental factor. So moving forward, okay, moving forward with your acquired aplastic anemia. So we all know now that your lab, lab of, some of the laboratory findings is of course your pancytopenia, your hypocellular um, bone marrow, and in some cases you can also observe macrocytic, uh, macrocytic red blood cells alongside with your, the normocytic. So we actually have um, a, a diagnostic criteria for aplastic anemia. We have the moderate aplastic anemia, the severe aplastic anemia, and the very severe aplastic anemia. So as you can see, uh, with regards to their bone marrow, hypocellular bone marrow plus at least one of the following, okay? Either neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, or a decrease in your RBC and your reticulocytes. In your severe aplastic anemia, um, there's a um, bone marrow cellularity of less than 25%. Plus two of at least uh, at least two of this um, cases such as your um, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, and also the decrease in your RBC and your reticulocyte. But more specifically, with regards to very severe, um, very severe um, aplastic anemia, all of these things are now present in your patient. So it's very important for us to actually identify this type of anemia because it can really be fatal in our patients, okay? For our patients. Having said that now, um, this is actually the um, appearance of a normal, okay? There is, this is a normal cellular bone marrow. So you can see you have adipose here, you have your fat, your yellow bone marrow, but majority of it are actually your red bone marrow that are capable of hematopoiesis. Unlike now, in cases of acquired aplastic anemia, as you can see, there's already a shift from, there's already a shift from um, red bone marrow to in, now becoming your yellow bone marrow. So, hindi ito regression kasi ang regression, yellow bone marrow to red bone marrow. So, this one is an evident, um, an evident case of aplastic anemia. Okay? An evident case of aplastic anemia. So, before we move forward to the inherited forms of aplastic anemia, so let's take a quick breather first. So, inhale. Okay, everyone. Hold. Exhale. So hold one more time. Okay. So inhale all the inhale all the positivity and the energy. So hold it. Okay. Now exhale all the stress, the bad vibes that you're feeling right now. So hold. Okay. For the last time, inhale. Okay, ex hold, exhale, and of course, hold, and now you can breathe 
normally. So again, let's start and let's begin our discussion about inherited forms of aplastic anemia. So with regards to inherited forms of aplastic anemia, these are actually present at early at an early age. So unlike your acquired aplastic anemia, syempre normal ka pa up until ma-expose ka dun sa mga factors that will cause the development of aplastic anemia in your system. But with regards to inherited forms of aplastic anemia, these are actually present in during birth already, okay? So there is a progressive bone marrow failure, okay? A progressive bone marrow failure. And patients with um, it, um, inherited or, yeah, inherited or hereditary aplastic anemia do have characteristic of phys characteristic physical malformations or stigmata so there are some um there are some um abnormality with regards to their um stature or even with regards to their physical um appearances okay so moving forward okay moving forward so um, there are different forms of aplastic anemia as that were mentioned in your RODAC. So we have Fanconi anemia, we have your dyskeratosis congenita, and your Swatchman, um, your Swatchman Bodian um, Diamond syndrome. Okay, so let's start with Fanconi syndrome. So Fanconi syndrome was first discovered by Dr. Guido Fanconi in 1927. So Fanconi anemia is actually a chromosome instability disorder characterized by aplastic anemia. So physical abnormalities and cancer susceptibility are also observed in patients with Fanconi anemia. So during Fanconi anemia, you could actually observe the following um the following to our patient so first and foremost it is an autosomal recessive genetic disorder and this is due to chromosomal break okay chromosomal breakage okay chromosomal breakage so this is common in your ashken ashkenazi juice so magtataka kayo kung ano ba yung mga ashken ashkenazi juice so these are a, these are due, obviously, that are um, intermarrying. So, intermarrying among their relatives. So, I guess if you have read some um, stories, di ba? Um, Ashkenazi Jew, ayan, marry yung mga kamag-anak nila. So, closely related um, relatives nila. So, your Fanconi anemia uh, have clinical features such as short stature, so we also have strabismus, okay? Strabismus or the abnormal alignment of the eyes, okay? Nor abnormal alignment of your eyes. So you can also observe low set ears, frequent infections, um, positive or they can also be have, they can also have deafness, and there are some abnormality with regards to their thumb. Abnormal thumbs are sometimes absent yung thumb nila, okay? And there are also hypopigment hypo pigmentation freckles. So at the same time, okay, um, the reason why it is under um, a plastic anemia is because Fanconi, okay, Fanconi, um, Fanconi anemia is actually um, characterized by low red cells, white cell, white blood cells, and also your platelets, okay, and also your platelet. And usually, ayan, usually the common um, the common um, treatment for this is bone marrow replacement, okay? Your bone marrow replacement. So, maisingit ko lang, no? I don't know if you have watched yung, yung movie ni Ding Dong Dantes, Angelica Panganiban, tsaka ni Angel Loxin, tsaka ni Zanjo Marudo. Yung anak ni Angel doon may aplastic anemia, okay? May aplastic anemia. That's why they need bone marrow transplant. So, maisingit ko lang, okay? And in addition to that, okay, in addition to that, um, Fanconi anemia cells, okay, Fancon in, during Fanconi anemia, cells have higher, have greater number of characteristic chromosome break in ring chromosomes. So, this indicates kapag madami siyang mga chromosomal breakage, this indicates that the cells are actually have increased fragility, okay, increased fragility. So, mas mabilis silang ma-destroy, ma, ma masira. 
So that is for your Fanconi syndrome, guys. Okay? That is for your Fanconi syndrome. Let's move on now to your Swashman Bodian. Uh, let's go now to your Dyskeratosis congenita. So your Dyskeratosis congenita, obviously, is also a form of aplastic anemia. So kapag sinabi kong aplastic anemia, automatically the clinical features such as your pancytopenia, yung hypocellular na bone marrow, all are present. The things that I am only adding are the things that are not yet been mentioned in other diseases, which makes this particular disease unique by itself. So, in your dyskeratosis congenita, um, it is characterized by mucocutaneous abnormalities. Okay? Mucocutaneous abnormalities, bone marrow failure, and pancytopenia. Ayan, yung sinasabi ko nga kanina. So, typica, the typical clinical presentation involve a triad of abnormal skin pigmentation. Okay? A triad of abnormal skin pigmentation. Aside from that, we also have dystrophic nails and oral leukoplakia. So leukoplakia is the deposition of that white plaque here on the side of your, on the side of the buccal cavity of your, uh, on your buccal cavity, obviously. So with regards to dyskeratosis congenita, patients that has um, DC, okay, yung mga patients natin that has DC are actually also prone to cancer, okay? They're also prone to cancer. But in addition to that, okay, in addition to that, they are also involved in some, um, the, our patients can have as a wide range of multi-system abnormalities ranging from your, your pulmonary fibrosis, liver disease, um, developmental delay, short stature, microencephaly, um, immunodeficiency, dental caries, and even periodontal disease. So, that is for the dyskeratosis congenita. So, again, this is a form of inherited aplastic anemia. Last but definitely not the least is your swashman bodian diamond syndrome. So, your SBDS is a multi-system disorder that is characterized by pancreatic insufficiency, cytopenia, skeletal abnormalities, and a predisposition for hematologic malignancy. So patient with Swashman, um, your SBDS, okay, patient with SBDS have peripheral cytopenia. So decrease as well yung pancreatic um, secretions nila. That's why, okay, that's why um, they can also have malabsorption eventually, okay? They can also have malabsorption. So, Having said that now, those three are the inherited forms of aplastic anemia. But before I finally end this discussion about aplastic anemia, there are also other forms of blood of bone marrow failure aside from aplastic anemia. And these are, number one, your pure red cell aplasia, your congenital dyserythropoietic anemia, your myelophytic anemia, and your anemia of chronic kidney disease. So let us start with your pure red cell aplasia. Your pure red cell aplasia or your PRCA is a rare disorder of erythropoiesis characterized by a selective and severe decrease of your erythroid precursors in an, in an otherwise normal bone marrow. So here, um, with regards to your um, red cell aplasia, the only, okay, the only thing decreased is your red blood cell. That's why we call it your pure red cell aplasia. Okay? Your pure red cell aplasia. So patients with um, PRCA have severe anemia, which are still normocytic by nature, and they are characterized to have reticulocytopenia. Okay? Reticulocytopenia. So obviously, mababa ang reticulocyte because to start with, there's a severe decrease in your erythroid precursors. Okay? Erythroid Precursor. So normal WBC and platelet counts are observed in patients with PRCA. And your PRCA can actually be acquired or congenital, okay? Acquired or congenital. So again, during pure red cell aplasia, red blood cell production is suppressed with little to no abnormality found in your WBCs and your platelet. So um, I want you to remember, guys, that congenital pure red cell aplasia is also called as your black your diamond black fan anemia. Your diamond black fan 
anemia is also known as your congenital pure red cell aplasia. And your acquired pure red aplasia can also be observed. So again, may, may two form ka, your acquired and your congenital. So now let's try to differentiate your Fanconi anemia and your diamond black fan anemia. Your Fanconi anemia is a form of aplastic anemia, meaning to say all cells, all blood cells are decreased. Unlike your diamond black fan, which is a pure red cell aplasia, only your red blood cells is depleted. Um, your brown skin pigmentation is only seen in your Fanconi. Thumb abnormalities are seen in your Fanconi. Renal abnormalities also in um, Fanconi anemia. And in your peripheral blood, um, Fanconi anemia is characterized by pancytopenia. Your diamond black fan anemia is characterized by a decrease in RBC alone with little to no abnormalities in your leukocytes and your thrombocytes. Okay, so that is your pure red cell, pure red cell aplasia. Second, um, on the other forms of bone marrow failure is your congenital dyserythropoietic anemia. So your congenital dyserythropoietic anemia is characterized by your refractory anemia, reticulocytopenia, and at the same time, um, at the same time, your um, at the same time, hypercellular bone marrow. Or this time, okay, this time, um, bone marrow failure doesn't just talk about mababa or ma low yung ano, low yung bone marrow, like in a plastic anemia. It also talk about hypercellular bone marrow. It's true, di ba, hindi ba mas maganda kapag may meron kang hypercellular bone marrow? Hindi rin po siya maganda, okay? Hindi rin siya maganda because in hypercellular bone marrow, there is ineffective erythropoiesis. So, meaning to say, there are dysplastic changes in your erythroblast, okay? There are dysplastic changes in your erythroblast. So, to start with, okay, hindi ka matutuwa because there are dysplastic changes now in your, um, in your, in your red blood cells, okay? They're in your red blood cells. So, dysplasia, ibig sabihin natin yan, may abnormal growth um, and development pagdating sa cells natin, okay? That will now cause abnormality, okay? That will now cause abnormality in your red blood cells. In addition to that, we also have your refractory anemia, which is, um, which is part, okay, which is actually a part of your uh, myelo dysplastic syndrome. So, with regards to ano, with regards to refractory anemia, okay, with regards to refractory anemia, um, this is observed not only in your CDA, okay, not only in your CDA, but in other myelo dysplastic diseases, okay, other, um, what do you call this? Other um, dysplastic diseases, okay. Myelo dysplastic diseases, rather. Okay? So, in addition to that, okay, in addition to that, um, when we say na congenital dyserythropoietic anemia, it can actually appear, okay, it can actually appear in, um, what do you call this? Um, in other forms. But before I move forward, let me, ano pala, elaborate refractory anemia. So, when we say refractory anemia, um, this is an anemic condition, okay? An anemic condition um, that is not associated with another disease. So, most probably, parang ano lang siya, um, parang um, it just is caused by a different, a different factor. So, with regards to refractory anemia, um, they can be successfully treated through blood transfusion. So, yun, yun, yun naman pagdating sa ano. Um, refractory anemia. They can be corrected with um, blood transfusion. So your congenital dyserythropoietic anemia, on the other hand, can actually be classified into three forms, okay? They can be classified into three forms, such as your CDA1, which is characterized with a CDAN1 uh, mutation that is found on your chromosome 15. You also have your CDA type 2, your CDA type 2 is also known as your hereditary erythroblastic multinuclearity with positive acidified serum, okay? 
or your HEMPAS. Okay? Your HEMPAS. So your CDA2 or your HEMPAS is the most common form of congenital dyserythropoietic anemia. So in this case, RBC display hemolysis in the acid serum test, which is also known as your HAMS, acidified serum test, and they do not lies, okay? They do not lies with sugar water test or your sucrose hemolysis test. So the HEMPAS antigen is your antigen I. So much of that when you reach your blood banking. But for now, okay, but for now, that's what I want you guys to remember that with regards to CDA type 2, that is also known as your HEMPAS, hereditary erythroblastic, multinucleality with positive acidified serum test. Okay? Bakit siya positive acidified serum test? Because it lies on the um, HAMS acidified test. So, lastly, we have your CDA, okay, your CDA3, which is the least common form of your congenital dyserythropoietic anemia. Okay? So, last but definitely not the least, we go now to myelophytisic um, myelof uh, myelophytic um, anemia, okay? I don't know if I am pronouncing it correct, if it is myelophytic anemia or myelophytic anemia. But either which, um, I want you to um, take this home with you na maintindihan nyo. During your myelophytic anemia, um, you have a hypoproliferative anemia, meaning to say your bone marrow also failed. But this time, it is actually because of the replacement of your bone marrow hematopoietic stem cell by your malignant cell, okay? By your malignant cell. So in this case, okay, in this case, okay, guys, um, during, um, during myelophytic anemia, your cancer metastasized to your bone marrow, okay? Your cancer metastasized to your bone marrow thereby yung originally na red bone marrow mo that is capable of hematopoiesis are already becoming hyperproliferative because of the bo the replacement of these abnormal cells usually it is actually being seen in cancer such as your breast cancer prostate cancer and even in your lung cancer very common siya sa tatlong form ng cancers na yon, okay? So in this case, cytopenia is due to an increased cytokines and growth factors that suppresses hematopoiesis, okay? That in return, it, it will destroy the stem cell, the progenitor cell, and the stromal cell. So in short, nasira si hematopoietic stem cell mo alongside with your um, alongside with your bone marrow microenvironment okay so all of those were destroyed because of increased cytokines and growth factor that aims to suppress your hematopoiesis sir paano po nangyari yon it's because of the abnormal and malignant cells that are invading or replacing your bone marrow and um, in a sense this type of anemia is also normocytic, normochromic anemia. Okay, normocytic, normochromic anemia. Yan, I've known people with prostate cancer na nag-metastasize to bone cancer. They call it bone cancer na at that time kasi nga, the, uh, the tumor cells are already, has already infiltrated the bone marrow. Okay, the bone marrow. So again, common sa breast, prostate, and lung cancer. So last but definitely not the least, okay, for the end of our part one of the, this, this discussion, we also have anemia of chronic kidney disease. So last time yung pinag-usapan natin is anemia due to chronic inflammation or disease. This one is anemia due to chronic kidney disease. So anemia of chronic kidney disease, so um, this is actually a complication of your chronic kidney disease na lang, okay? Why is that? So you all know that your kidney is actually the uh, main organ producing your erythropoietin. So meaning to say, if your kidney is no longer functioning well, even its um, fu um, function to, to produce your erythropoietin is already inadequate, now leading to anemia. In addition to that, um, increased urea, okay, or blood urea nitrogen inside your blood due to um, incapacity uh, due to the uh, 
due to the disrupted filtration capacity of your kidney um, during uremia or increased ure ureal levels inside your blood, um, erythropoiesis in is inhibited. And in addition to erythropoiesis being inhibited, nagi increase din yung RBC fragility mo dahil sa urea. So what do we mean by that? Naglalize siya sa loob ng blood vessel mo dahil sa mataas na urea content in your blood. Okay? Urea content in your blood. And eventually, ayan din, um, because of dialysis for patient that has chronic kidney disease, they have chronic blood loss. Ayan. They have chronic blood loss and also iron deficiency as well. Okay? They have, they also have iron deficiency. Okay? They also have iron deficiency. So that, so that is for anemia of chronic disease. So in this particular discussion, we did discuss um, we did discuss your bone marrow failure from your aplastic anemia, both the acquired and, and the heredit inherited or the hereditary. We also did talk about other forms of bone marrow failure, such as your your diamond black fan anemia, your um aside from that, we did talk about your congenital dyserythropoietic anemia, your myelophytic anemia, and your anemia of chronic kidney disease. So with that, thank you so much, guys, for listening. Please take note that there is also another video. Okay, this is just part one of our discussion for today. So please proceed to the next video. And then afterwards, we will be meeting for our discussion through our Google Meet for today. Thank you so much.